Hey guys, I hope you all are doing great. I am Nitin and in this video, I am going to talk about similarity search. So in the previous video, we were talking about how to train a PyTorch triplet margin loss based image similarity network, which basically learns the difference between two images and then gives some emitting vectors, which can be used to quantify an image and then later be used to find similar images. Now in this video, we are going to discuss about how we can index or store all the meanings from the images that we have for the images and the labels that we have and then later with with any new image how we can search for similar images or similar labels so the video is all about indexing your uh, pre-labeled images and then using new images to find a label for that image so for those of you who have not watched the part one of this video series i can go and watch here uh, it's called PyTorch Metric Learning. You can search by my channel name. And in this video, I'm going to talk about doing reverse embedding search using the Quadrant. So, Quadrant is a kind of a database. It is built using Rust. So, it is very reliable, very performant. And in this video, I'm going to basically provide you with all the steps on how to use the database, how to index your embeddings, and then how to search your embeddings back from there so uh, let's start so i'll open up my vs code instance and i have already wrote the code for the indexing so uh, let me start off by first launching the quadrant client or quadrant server so so basically quadrant server is is, is provided as a grpc microservice uh, with which you can connect using some python client and then over the either HTTP or gRPC port, you can connect to the quadrant server and then put your embeddings there, index your images, and also do a reverse image search for the embedding. So let me start off by running this server. So the command for that is docker compose, and it's a custom file name, so I have to pass that as well, and then up. So with this, our quadrant server is running and then I'm also going to start my JupyterLab server because I'm going to work inside that. Okay, so here we are in inside our JupyterLab server and let, so in the previous uh, demo video about training the models, we, we took, took a look at training notebook and also visualization notebook and oh, let me increase the font size as well so here in this video uh, we are going to take a look at the indexing file so basically uh, let me start by importing all the necessary modules so these are some basic modules and then we are importing torch vision for transformation the the model which we wrote in the previous uh, tutorial video this is a simple alex nest uh, model and we have the train weights you can also find the weights inside the repository as well if you want to do a hands-on with this current notebook so models are imported these are some constants that i have defined so image size is going to be 128 by 128 embedding size we chose 64 because they work best but for your cases if you have a larger database uh, you can basically use 128 512 or 1020 for any embedding size However, that will increase your memory, GP memory, and then also increase the latency. For indexing our image, we can define a batch size. That is, we're going to load 100 images at once and then uh, compute their remaining vectors and then push it to embedding uh, database, that is, quadrant database. So, I uh, have executed this cell as well. And now, here we are initializing our transform function, data loader, loading our model weights, and then initializing the quadrant client. So, we are preferring grpc because that gives you a performance boost while generating the indexes and we are also passing both ports http and grpc so in case grpc is not available it will fall back to http port so i think uh, this is normal warning we can ignore that and our model is initialized okay so here uh, this is an additional step so basically uh, we will see if the collection name exists. So what is collection name? So this is basically inside quadrant. You can create different collections 
Uh, however, for our use case, only a single collection name is required. So we're going to store all our embeddings with this collection name. Let's think of it as a key so you can create different collections. For example, if we have embedding computing model or uh, different models, so you can create different collection and then during the inference, you can change the collection name to get the reverse label search from the different type of embeddings from different models. So here we are checking how many uh, if our existing I mean, I mean if our collection exists or not and if it doesn't exist it will also basically create that collection and at the same time we are also checking how many records we have in our collection so so far we have 72,876 records which I did during the testing so what I'm going to do is I'm going to execute this cell uh, this is optional if you want to like just only update your collection records uh, on the existing one so if you have 72,000 if you want to add like 4, 5 or 10,000 or whatever number of more records you can just ignore this cell uh, what it does is uh, it will delete the existing collection and then recreate it so basically deleting all the previous records that we have in our collection so i'm doing it uh, so that we start fresh so uh, we have like zero records in our quadrant uh, collection now and then uh, in this step we are iterating uh, using our total data loader and then the embedding is, is loaded by passing the images toward the model and then uh, those embeddings are basically pushed to the, to the quadrant database so in order to push it uh, there are another ways which which are uh, simple but because we wanted to have the flexibility to update our points so in in case we have several records in our database but still we want to add more records so this is a preferable way we have to create this point object uh, i mean inside this points list we have to create this point struct object and then pass our embedding as a vector for this point struct object and then push it to the uh, client so this is how you will do it and then once the, the embedding computation is done uh, we will also see the number of records that we have in our database so we we initially defined a batch size of 100 so now it it is loading 100 images at once in a single iteration and then uh, pushing it to the quadrant database so it should be done in few seconds let's wait for that all right so we have 70626 records added inside our quadrant database so before moving forward i also want you to uh, have a look at the data set because since we loaded it in our part one so you can check that video out so basically this data set is downloaded from kaggle and it contains these two directories train and valid so inside train directories there will be sub directories each with the name of a class and then each class would have uh, a number of images preferably all these sub directories will have same number of images to make it balanced and basically this contains the bird classes so this is about our data set and since we have deleted the older index and then added it the train images so we have this one and then if you want to let's say add more images to our index at a later time of course so what we can do is we can change this to a validation directory reload our data loaders and we can still check how many records we have in our data set i mean database so we have 70,000, and then instead of deleting our records we can just skip this particular cell because we don't want to delete all previous records and then i can execute this cell once again so now what it is doing is we have 2250 images in our validation set so it is adding those to our index so now previously we had like 70k records now we have 2000 more records so that's how you can update your indexing without losing your previous records and in case we want to delete that so it's very simple you can go back and then execute this particular cell to delete and recreate the collection so this is about creating your index now things can become complicated very easily so i also provided a build index script which is the same thing that you see in this notebook uh, however things are more simplified so you can basically execute this cell or, or execute this uh, build index py with uh, 
with the parameters to build your index and uh, you can see basically there is this override of flag so when you when you pass this one it will delete all the records and then and then start it from record zero when you want to update more records for example add records images from validation data set so in that case you can ignore this or remove this particular flag so it will only update your content db so now let's move forward because our database is ready so we can what we can do is we can choose some random image so basically it is choosing a random index and then we are loading that image and then because it's a single image and our model accepts a batch of images so we can use torch.unsqueeze to basically add one additional dimension to our image and pass it to the model and then get out the embedding for the zeroth element just to get the output for a single image and in order to search for a similar vector which you get out from this model you have to uh, do again uh, we are doing batch search so so you can cre create a list of this search request object passing this embedding as a vector and then once you get the results back you can say how many similar matches you want to get so in our case we only want to get the top one or top out of uh, all the matches we only want to get the first the most recent match so we are setting the limit to one and then we will just take out the zeroth element out of the search results to just show how it performs so this is the ground truth which we extracted from the directory parent directory name and then this is the uh, predicted level which we get back from our quadrant database so as you can see the ground truth and, and predicted level matches that means uh, whatever embedding vector we are throwing at uh, the uh, client quadrant client the most similar embedding vector which we get its label actually matches with the ground truth so it's working pretty well now in production you would want search for a single match but to increase your throughput you would want to search for multiple embeddings in a batch so that can be easily done and now this time we don't have to uh, wait to extract out a single image embedding instead what we can do is we can for example i'm choosing five random indexes and then loading all those images you can also utilize pytorch data loader to do that but to keep things simple i'm loading it using a list comprehension extracting out their labels and then passing this image as a batch to our embedding model and search queries uh, instead of a single list now add this line to make it a list comprehension so we, we create a list of such request objects with multiple vectors in it and then again i'm doing a batch search and this time instead of choosing out the zeroth element i'm just keeping all the predicted results which we get again the limit is set to one so we are getting the top one match and then we can plot all those things so this was the ground truth for this image and this is the predicted label or in other words this is the uh, most similar matched label for the given embedding vector which we got from passing this image to the model so even if we have a new image which is not exactly to the original image uh, if it has a matching embedding vector uh, you will get the the most suitable predicted label out of it so this shows that our our training was very good we our model learned to differentiate between images and then basically predicting some n dimensional vector which quantifies the image and now this quadrant database basically uses that vector to uh, to index the images in a way that whenever we pass an embedding vector to our database it search for similar embedding vectors and because as a payload we saved the label of that vector so we can extract that label back and here you can see uh, we get the predicted and ground truth labels out of our database so i hope this added some values uh, if you guys uh, want to have a look at the code so it is already uploaded in my uh, github account so you can go and check it out there so also do check out the part one of the video for how to train the model and this part video is basically about utilizing the quadrant vector search engine to index your images uh, embedding vectors along with label payload and then do a reverse embedding search to get the uh, label out so that's all for, for this video i hope you really enjoyed it thank you 
please leave a like do some comments let me know your thoughts about how this helps you or how would you utilize it if you want to see something more in the future